Okay, so calculus is amazing for so many reasons, but uh, one of the top reasons why calculus is awesome is that it could find the area and volume of any shape that we can imagine. So for example, now of course I got a triangle over here, but let's suppose we had some sort of crazy shape that looked like this. So maybe it kind of went like this, and maybe it went like this, and we want to find the area of this little shape right here. Well, there is no formula that exists that we could just simply plug in the values and actually calculate the area for this crazy looking shape. But we could use calculus to determine the area. So calculus, again, one of the uh, main problems it solves for us is to be able to find the area and volume of pretty much any shape, again, that we can imagine. Now, what we're going to do here is compare basic math, basic formulas with calculus, just so you can kind of get a sense, uh, an appreciation of how calculus works. So we're going to uh, calculate the area of this triangle right here by using basic math. Now, when I'm talking about basic math, we're going to use the formula for the area of a triangle. So that's area is equal to 1 half base times height. And I'm going to give you the height information and the base information. And I'm also going to give you the equation of this line, a linear equation in terms of y equals mx plus b. So if you know some uh, basic algebra, this will be very helpful. But even if you don't know algebra and you do know how to find the area of a triangle, well, you'll get some sort of uh, appreciation for how calculus works. So what I'm going to show you here in one second is we're going to calculate the area of a triangle on the x, y uh, axis. Of course, I'm going to give you some more detailed information here in just one second. And then we're going to uh, find this uh, area of this triangle again using calculus. And uh, for those of you that have never studied calculus or are interested in calculus, you're going to see a little bit of how calculus works. And maybe you can get kind of excited about maybe wanting to study calculus. But anyways, we're going to get to all this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I've been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Now, one more time, it, uh, it is helpful if you have some basic algebra knowledge. But uh, even if you don't, try to uh, you know, follow along because I think you'll get the basic sense of uh, why calculus is so amazing and how we can kind of compare it to uh, formulas that we have for basic shapes like triangles, circles, rectangles, etc. All right, so enjoy the video. All right, so here is basic math. So to find the area of this triangle, we need to know the formula for an area of your triangle. Okay, luckily we have one, and here it is right here in its glory. The area of a triangle is equal to one half base times height. Now, depending on the kind of um, uh, the orientation of the triangle, we'll have to figure out what the base and height is. Uh, for, but this particular one, this is a nice, lovely uh, right triangle, so we can. Uh, look at four as the base and three as the height. So we literally just plug in those values. So the area is gonna be one half uh, base, which is four, and the height is three. So one half times four times three is 12. 12, one half of 12 is six. So the area of that triangle is six. And that is that, okay? So we're, you know, if you got six, then I must uh, give you a nice little happy face with a check mark. Now that was super easy. But what was, um, you know, the key to doing this problem? Well, it was a formula, okay? Formula for the area of a triangle. So, you know, luckily, if you come across any triangle, right, anything like this or whatever the case is, you can always use this uh, formula as long as you uh, can determine uh, the base and the height of those triangles. So that's awesome, all right? Now, let's check out how we can use calculus. Now, obviously, the... Um, Area is six, so the answer is not going to change, but the, our approach is going to be completely different. So let's show you how calculus uh, works. All right, now I've done uh, quite a few videos on calculus and the essence of it, and uh, my um, kind of uh, 
goal in all of those other videos and this one as well is just to show you the application of calculus. So calculus, we have this crazy looking symbol right here. This little thing right here looks kind of like an S, right? So S is uh, um, the first letter obviously in the word sum. And this little thing is what we call an elongated S. So it's like an S stretched out. So we're really kind of finding the sum. But what we're going to be doing in calculus, we're going to be finding the area. So this little thing is called an integral, or the symbol itself is called an elongated S. But basically what we're going to be doing is finding uh, all these little tiny little rectangles that can fit underneath here. Because we can find the area of a rectangle, and the area of a rectangle is very easy. So let's say I have a rectangle, uh, its base is 2, and its height is 10. What's the area of that? It's 2 times 10 is 20. Okay, so uh, what we do in calculus is we find the area of all these little triangles that could fit underneath this, I'm sorry, all the uh, area of all these little rectangular strips, if you will, okay, that can fit underneath this triangle. Now, if you have big, thick uh, rectangles, then our area uh, estimation is not going to be so good. But if we had like infinitely skinny little rectangles, we could have a precise, matter of fact, an exact, okay, if we had infinitely skinny or little rectangles, we can have the exact area of this triangle. And that is effectively uh, what calculus allows us to do. Now, some of you might be saying, well, why do I need to do all this crazy stuff right here? I don't want to do calculus. I'm like, yeah, you know, I want to take the easy way out. And I agree, you should take the easy way out. However, I'm going to get to the mechanics of this particular problem here in a second. What if, uh, instead of a triangle, what if we were trying to find the area of something like this? Okay. So now we're looking at like this thing right here. And so some of you might be like, no problem. Give me the uh, formula for the area of this. Uh, I mean, I don't even know what we call this, right? Let's call it a thingamajiggy, all right? A thingamajiggy, whatever the case is. I'll just <laughs> abbreviate it. So you go uh, in your math book and you look up, hey, uh, what's the formula for a thingamajiggy? And unfortunately, there is no formula, okay, for this uh, object. So you're like, oh, no formula. How am I going to do this? Well, calculus would be your, uh, you know, superpower right here. You, you need calculus in order to do this problem, okay? Now, uh, obviously, we're going to, uh, I'm going to show you how calculus works to find the area of this particular triangle, but the same technique as what I'm going to show you right here could be applied to find the area of this guy as well. So, you know, it's obviously a little bit more uh, challenging. The math is a little bit more involved, but not that much more involved, okay? But that's for another video, another time. So, okay, so what do, what do we do here? Well, here we have uh, our little uh, triangle, okay? Its base is 4, its height is 3. But uh, this, the hypotenuse, this part of the triangle, uh, this is a line, okay? Now, if you understand lines like y equals mx plus b, and I'm really kind of gauging this or gearing this uh, video towards anyone who's taken any kind of basic algebra, right? But even if you haven't taken any um, algebra, this little equation, y equals 3 fourths x, is the equation for this line right here, okay? That's what that is. Now... This point, 4, 3, happens to be the, the corner of this triangle. So in calculus, we can uh, write ourselves a little kind of uh, prescription here of how to find the area. So we're going to say this little long S, we're going to say, all right, uh, we want to find all the little rectangles, okay, like I just described here, um, for this function right here, 3, 4, x. all right, so we want to find all the rectangles under this line, okay? And I get borders the x-axis, and then we put a little x right there. And this dx, that's just a little notation that we, we use. But I want to count the rectangles from 0, this is 0, 0, all the way out to 4, okay? So I'm going to start from 0, and I'm going to go to 4. So that's how we find the area, okay, of this triangle. Right, so we're basically uh, kind of programming our little calculus notations. They're like, all right, start from zero, go all the way out to four, and find all the little rectangular strips underneath this uh, line. Okay, this uh, line right here, 
and this line, if you go straight down perpendicular, it forms a triangle. So I know I'm kind of I'm kind of keeping this very basic, but if you understand so far what I'm talking about, then that's excellent. Okay, so now what we have to do is do the mechanics of actually calculating this out. So we're going to have to solve this basic integral problem. So this is called integration in calculus. This is all, and basically just means to add up, and effectively what we're going to be doing is adding up all these little infinite tiny little rectangular strips, but uh, uh, we have some pretty easy way of adding this up. We're not going to have to do an infinite uh, amount of addition. Okay, so luckily uh, I'm going to show you this now. All right, so the first thing we have to do is we have to uh, evaluate this integral. We have to find the integral of 3 fourths x. Okay, so don't worry about this notation. This isn't a formal calculus course. But basically, I got to get rid of this little symbol here, and I got to this symbol, this elongated s, is integral three fourths x. I have to do something with that. Well, in calculus, we actually have a formula, and basically, it states this. So this three fourths x, this x here is really x to the first power. So I want you, I want you to just kind of focus in on this part. So here is what the formula tells us in calculus. So that power one, see that little one right there? Okay you add a one to it. It's always a one, okay? Another, so if that was squared, we would still add a one. Or if this was like x to the fourth, we'd still add a one. So it's gonna be one plus one, which is in fact what? Two, okay? So we're gonna write three-fourths x. We're gonna increase that little power by one, so that's gonna be two. And then whatever that power turned out to be, in this case, it's x to the second power, okay? You're gonna divide by that little, um, that exponent. So in this case, it's two. So we're going to divide that three-fourths x squared by two. Okay, so if you understand that, you uh, understand basic integration and calculus. Now, um, this little x thing, this is a basic polynomial, and there's all kinds, there's different type of rules that we need to use uh, to uh, find the integral in calculus, but this is a very, very common uh, rule right here, right? But it's not difficult to follow, right? I mean, so far, hopefully, you know, this isn't too scary. So now we have to figure out 3 fourths x squared divided by 2. Okay, so 3 fourths divided by 2. When you do that lovely little fraction math, you will get 3 eighths x squared. So just do the, let's do this real quick. 3 fourths divided by 2 is equal to 3 fourths times one half, of course, that's three eighths. By the way, if you have any trouble with fractions, I have a ton of uh, videos uh, about fractions on my YouTube channel. Uh, just check out my pre-algebra playlist. All right, so we've um, took the uh, integral here. That's what we're doing. But you know, don't let this the terminology scare you. We just did. We just used this symbol, and it told us to do this. Okay, which got us right here. All right, so this turned into this, 3 eighths x squared. So you're like, okay, great, what do I do with that? Well, this right here will allow us to actually find the area. Now, so remember, we're adding up the triangle from zero to uh, four, right? So remember we're over here, we're going from zero to four. Now, this little formula right here, this 3 eighths x squared, is what will actually allow us to calculate the area, okay? So here's how it works. So we, we're gonna, let me just show you right here, you can see the area is six, but uh, we have this three eighths x squared, and we're gonna subtract it from three eighths x squared. Now here, we're gonna plug in for x, we're gonna let x is equal to four, all right? So here's a little triangle right here. So it's four, and here's zero. So it kind of works uh, a little bit in reverse. So this is gonna be your ending point right there, and this will be your starting point right here. So I'm gonna plug in zero for x right there, and then I'm gonna plug in four for x right here, and when I do that calculation, this was the area of that triangle, okay? This is, uh, this is how this works. Now you can see, when I plug in zero for x right here, this whole thing will just be zero. So really what I have to figure out what is what three eighths, uh, 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 and I'm going to put it in 4, and I'm going to square it right there. So let's go ahead and take a look at the math I already did. So here it is. So I have 3 eighths. I'm plugging in that 4 squared. 4 squared, of course, is 16. So 8 goes into 16. 2, 2 times 3 is 6. 
And that should look familiar to you because that is, in fact, the same area answer as when we use the formula way over here. Okay, area is equal to 6. But, uh, you know, we obviously use calculus. Now, would you use calculus? Is it practical to use calculus here to find the area of this triangle? Uh, the answer is no. Okay, it would not be uh, practical. Uh, we want to use our lovely formulas, right? So, like, area of a circle um, of a, you know, like a rectangle, circle, triangle, um, you know, those basic figures, uh, things like that. Yeah, we definitely want to use our formula. But when we come across a thingamajiggy, or some sort of crazy object, and we're like, okay, there is no formula. Well, then we got to go ahead and uh, break out our calculus skills, okay?